Hello. Seth, right? Yeah. I think I know your sister. I don't, I don't know if we've trained together before. I'm, I'm over at Kyos. So. Welcome. Right. Did you know there was a seminar today? No. That's okay. There's a seminar today. <laughs> I'll wait till. Oh, let's see, we got a couple, couple more stragglers. Wait for this last one to hop on the mat and then we'll get started. I'll, I'll wait till he, hop, he hops on. Is he, is he gonna come out? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll wait for him and then I'll. Can everybody see okay? Yeah. All Where do you typically train, Allie? Okay. 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 Are you now back permanently or are you visiting now and then going back to Australia? Wow. Okay. Welcome back. <laughs> Let's get, we'll get started. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you have ever tried to get into a position and couldn't because your joints didn't want to go that way? How many of you, okay, that's most people. How many of you have ever been put in a position by somebody else that your joint didn't want to go and you ended up injured for some reason? 80% or so, okay? So that's obviously why we're all here. Some of you are here for open mat. There's open mat afterwards. Um, but this seminar is called Better Mobility for BJJ. So my goal is to teach you some actionable steps that you can take um, so that you can get into positions that you want to get into when you want to get into them and build some resiliency so that when other people put you places you don't want to be, you don't get hurt, okay? So who am I? I'm Matt Guffey. I own Victory High Performance. We're a strength and conditioning facility for grapplers in San Jose. I'm a brown belt under Kyle Terra, certified strength and conditioning specialist, and I have 17 plus years of coaching experience. I've been doing this for a really, really long time, um, and it, there is nothing that brings me more joy than helping people like you do more of what you love, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm just like you guys, right? I love being on the mats. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole world, and when I can't do it, it drives me crazy, okay? So I made it my mission to help people like you do the things that you wanna do. Some of you have been to the Bulletproof seminar that we did, uh, we did here, how many months ago was that? It's maybe four or five months ago? Yeah. Um, you may have seen a Bulletproof seminar in another gym. Right? We've been going around to all the academies here in the Bay, um, trying to spread the message and um, teach people as much as we can about what they can do to mitigate injuries. Um, and so during that Bulletproof seminar, we go over three pillars, right? Mobility, power, and strength as jiu-jitsu athletes. But today, we're going to focus on just the first pillar, okay? So what is mobility? Mobility is your ability to move um, with strength through full range of motion, 
okay? As it pertains to jujitsu, it's your ability to get in and out of positions when you want, right? Your ability to retain guard, your ability to um, execute submissions, right? For purposes of today, we're going to talk about mobility as our foundation, okay? You can't move where you can't move. And if you think of these potholes here as any kind of movement limitation, whether it's previous injury um, or maybe you've had an overuse thing going on and you've got compensate or compensatory patterns that you've fallen into, um, this is, right, this is our foundation. And so if you were to imagine trying to drive your car over this, you'd probably fuck it up, right? So when we have movement limitations, we have previous injuries, typically we have to take alternate routes. And in taking alternate routes, we put our body in positions that uh, maybe it wasn't meant for. So for instance, like if I can't lift my arm up over my head, I have to go around some way. You know, eventually that compensation turns into injury down the road. Okay? So what we're going to start with are what are called CARs. CAR stands for Controlled Articular Rotations. You don't need to memorize the acronym, okay? but there are three things that I want you to pay attention to as we do this. The first is that we never move through what's called closing angle pain. Okay? Closing angle pain just means if I tilt my head this way, this angle closes, this angle opens. If I feel pain here, typically that's the joint coming together. If the joint comes together, you're not going to feel better tomorrow. Okay? So as we're doing this, if you feel closing angle pain, stop, go around it, go back the other way, okay? Don't push through it. Second thing is we need to isolate the joint. So sticking with the neck here, if I'm, if I'm working on my neck and I'm moving around, but then I start to move my spine, now that's my spine acting as my neck and I can't get an accurate read as to what my neck is capable of, okay? And lastly, we need to move through a full range of motion. So Back to the shoulder, if I just move my shoulder like this, I'm not gonna build any mobility in the shoulder because I haven't pushed it to its limit. Okay, if you think about just picking up a dumbbell, if I pick up a five pound dumbbell and I lift it five times, my bicep isn't gonna grow because I haven't pushed the muscle to its end capacity. Right, I need to get close enough that it has to work at that, at that last bit so that the brain knows to send resources to the target tissue. Same thing for joints. Right? I have to move all the way across, all the way up, all the way back, all the way down, all the way around, in every direction, in order to get the, the nutrients that I want to the joint capsule. Okay? So no closing angle pain, isolate the joint. If as we're doing this, you feel yourself moving anything else, stop, bring yourself back, and focus on the joint that we're, uh, that we're working on. Okay, and then lastly, move through a full range of motion. So, why do we do CARS? First, to maintain current joint function. Right? Everybody here has seen somebody get stuck like this, right? walking around like this as they've spent too much time in this position. Okay? We want to make sure that the joint function we currently have, we keep. Because if you stop moving something, it will stop working. Right? If I never lifted my arm up over my head, eventually it goes away. Right? Back to the bicep example, if I lift a bunch of weights and I get huge biceps and then I stop lifting weights, then my biceps get smaller right? because my body doesn't want to send resources to a place that isn't being worked. Okay? Second is to expand overall range of motion. So in addition to just maintaining your current level with cars, we can expand that range. Right? We can get more range. We want to lubricate the joints, so we're sending uh, nutrients to the joint capsule right, getting things uh, lubed up for higher intensity work, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna focus on hips today. Does anybody have any existing hip stuff going on? Any problems with hips? What, can you talk, talk to me about it? Um, it's not in the actual joint, uh -huh. more like More like what, so, oh, sacrum? Yeah. Okay, I think you should be okay but just let me know, okay, if anything, okay, if you do everything, I think you'd be okay. If you do jujitsu, you're probably fine, okay? All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate it, and then I'll stand up and I'll cue you all. So just make sure you're somewhere you can see me, 
okay? We're gonna start on our sides with our knees bent 90 degrees and our hips bent 90 degrees, roughly, okay? Arms are gonna be out just like this, and we're gonna try to create tension by pressing into the ground, okay, with the bottom limb. So in this case, my left arm and left leg. I wanna make sure all of this stays really, really stiff. Okay, from here, we're gonna pull the right knee up into the armpit as far as we can, open as wide as we can. We're gonna start to rotate. So you notice how I'm turning my knee down and my ankle up as if I'm trying to point the sole of my foot toward the ceiling. I'm gonna continue trying to rotate that way as I come all the way around. You'll feel cramp in the side of your hip here. All the way down and then back to start. So this is the first half. The back half goes back, open, feel that cramp, drive the knee up toward the ceiling, up into the armpit, and then back down, okay? So we're gonna do this three, si three times on one side and three times on the other side. Does anybody have any questions before we go? All good? Okay, so let's have everybody lay on their right side so that we're all going the same direction. Lay on your right side. Good, and bend your hips 90 degrees, knees 90 degrees. Uh, lay on your right side if you can, just so I don't have to cue both left and right sides. All right, very good. Okay, so with that bottom limb, your bottom arm, in this case your right arm and your right leg, make sure it stays really, really st stiff. Glue it to the ground, okay? With the left knee, bring your left knee up into your armpit as high as you can. Open toward the ceiling, yep using only your hip, not your arm, there you go. Start to turn the knee down and the ankle up. Point the sole up toward the ceiling. Continue moving around. Yep, until your leg is parallel with the ground, good. And then bring your knees together. Very good. Let's go back the other direction, so kick back. Open toward the ceiling. Drive the knee up toward the ceiling into the armpit, and back down to start position. Good. Good, we're gonna do two more on this side. Let's go into the armpit, open toward the ceiling, knee down, ankle up, like you're pointing the sole up toward the ceiling, should feel cramp in the side here. Kevin, go the other way, there you go. Yeah, there you go, good. Continue around until your leg is parallel with the ground, and then knee to knee. Good, kick back, unwind. Let's open the knee toward the ceiling, bring it up into the armpit. Good, and then back down to start. One more time, knee up, open toward the ceiling, knee down, ankle up. Good, you should feel cramp, go toward the cramp. Keep coming around until your leg is parallel to the ground. Good, and then knee to knee. Good, back the other way, kick back. Open the knee, drive toward the ceiling, drive toward the armpit, and back to start. Cool, let's flip sides, we're gonna do the other side. How's everybody feel so far? Is everybody finding the cramp okay? All right, go toward the cramp. I know you don't want to, but go toward it, I promise. That's, that's where the work is done, okay? So everybody should be on their left side now. Go ahead and create some tension on the, on the left side. Press your left arm and your left leg into the ground. Stay really, really stiff. Let's bring the right knee up into the armpit. Drive up toward the ceiling. Good, start to turn the knee down, ankle up. Find that cramp, go toward the cramp. I see faces, that's good. Keep coming around until your leg is parallel to the ground and bring knees back together. Good, kick back like this, yep, open toward the ceiling, drive that knee up toward the ceiling, then into the armpit, and back to start. Very good, good job. Let's go again up into the armpit, open toward the ceiling, knee down, ankle up, continue around until the leg is parallel to the ground, Knee to knee, 
There you go, good. Kick back. Open toward the ceiling. Drive that knee up toward the ceiling. Up into the armpit. And down, we're gonna do one more time on this side. Knee into armpit. Open, knee down, ankle up. Find the cramp and hang there. Kevin, turn the other way. This way, there you go. There you go, that's it. Good job. Keep coming around until the knee is parallel to the ground. Yep, good, and then knee to knee. Very good job. Kick straight back, open toward the ceiling. Drive the knee toward the ceiling, the other ceiling. There you go. <laughs> it's okay. And then knee up into the armpit and back down. Very good job. How's everybody's hips feel? Feel good? Cool. All right, good job. So, like I said, maintain current joint function, expand overall range of motion, lubricating the joints, and we're preparing ourselves for higher intensity work, which comes next. Okay. I'm gonna go over what's called PALES and RAILS. So PALES stands for Progressive Angular Isometric Loading. You don't need to remember that. RAILS, Regressive Angular Isometric Loading. So what is progressive and regressive tissue? Okay, if we look at like my elbow, okay? If I pull my hand toward my shoulder, the progressive tissue is on the outside. Okay, it's the big angle, right? I've got more range of motion on this side than I do this side at this point. So the progressive tissue is everything here, okay? The regressive tissue is on the inside. It's the small angle, okay? Everybody follow me so far? Okay, so progressive tissue, big angle, regressive tissue, small angle. Now, depending on my joint, or the joint angle at the time, progressive and regressive tissue may change. So if we're still on the elbow, okay, and I fully extend the elbow, now, the progressive tissue is on this side and the regressive tissue is on this side because I can't go anymore this way, right? I have, no, I have no more range of motion here and I've got a lot of range of motion the other way, okay? So I'm not trying to confuse anybody. I just want to make sure that everybody understands that the, the progressive tissue is on the outside, is on the big angle, okay? And this will make a little bit more sense once we're down into our hip stuff, okay? So... The protocol is exactly the same for all pales and rails. You can do this on any joint in any direction that you need more range of motion or more strength at end range of motion. Okay, provided that there is no pain in the joint. So if you feel closing angle pain, do not do pales and rails. Okay, because it will be worse. Okay, so the protocol is this. Two minutes stretch at end range. Okay, then we're gonna press progressively, at progressively higher intensities toward the physical block. In this case, the physical block is gonna be the ground, okay? And then we're gonna execute safest, greatest effort away from the physical block. So, before anybody does anything, I'll show you what it means for the hip, okay? I'm in this 90-90 position, it's pretty common in jiu-jitsu, right? Most everybody has sat here at some point or ended up in this place before. Okay. And I'm focused on the backside leg, okay? This being my lead leg, this being my trail leg, okay? I'm gonna rotate toward the trail leg until I feel stretch or I feel closing angle sensation. I, I can't go any further, okay? Hold that for two minutes. The physical block is underneath me, so it will be as if I was pressing into the ground like this, right, this way but I can't, I can't go anywhere. I'm already at end range, okay? And so I'll cue you through it. It's gonna be 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, and then I'll say safest, greatest effort, okay? If at any point during that time, you don't feel good, your knee doesn't like it, your hip doesn't like it, just back off a little bit and hang there, okay? So if we get to 60% and you're like, eh, my knee really doesn't like this, okay? Back off, don't keep pushing through it, okay? And then away from the physical block part, okay? So it's going to be, I'm going to be trying to pull my ankle off the ground. But I'm at end range, so I won't be able to, and that's okay. Okay? Like if I tried to pick up my ankle from here, I can't do it. I'm already at end range. It won't work. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I was not at end range, and I lean away from this, now see I can pick it up. 
But if I'm in this position, I'm not working the end range, which is what I want. So we have to make sure that we're in a position that when we try to pick it up off the ground, we cannot. It's going to be the hardest you've ever worked to move so little. Okay? You won't be able to, you're not going to be able to go anywhere, and that's okay. Do you have a question, Greg? Okay. All right, cool. So, why do we do pails and rails? Well, I mentioned it earlier. We want to increase the range of motion of any given joint, provided that we do not have closing angle pain. Okay, the joint functions properly the way it's supposed to function. Okay, and we want to build strength at end ranges. So everybody in here has at some point or another been put in a position that they did not decide to be in in jujitsu, right? And what we're doing here is we're exposing the joint to high levels of force under control so that when somebody else does it for you, it's not the first time you've seen this or not the first time you've felt this sensation. Okay, because the way human tissue works, or any tissue for that matter, right, a piece of paper, tape, whatever, tissue breaks when the force exerted upon it exceeds its ability to withstand, absorb, or create that force equally, right? So anybody who's ever torn anything, um, you know, will understand that, you know, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and then it's not, right? And that's because the amount of force being applied to the joint was greater than its ability to absorb it, okay? So that's what we're doing here with pails and rails. So we're gonna go through um, both internal and external rotation on both legs. I'll walk you all through it. Don't sweat, just make sure you're somewhere where you can see me um, so that I can cue you, okay? So if you need to move, go ahead and move. We can come over this way. You don't need a lot of space for this. We can have some people come over this way. Yeah, if you wanna come over onto this side, that's totally fine. Just be careful of the uh, cord, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lead with, we're gonna lead with the left leg. So put the left leg forward, the outside of your left shin should be on the ground. Yep, left, 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 good. All right, cool. And we're gonna to try to create a 90 degree angle in the ankle, the knee, and the hip. And we'll do the same thing on the back side. So the hip's gonna come out, your right leg's gonna come out, and then the Right knee should be about a 90 degree angle and right ankle should be about a 90 degree angle. Does everybody feel okay in this position so far? No pain or anything? All right, cool. So we're gonna start with the lead leg. We're gonna sit up really, really tall in front of that left leg. Okay, try to get as long as you can from the hip all the way up to the head. And we're gonna lean forward, but note how I'm leaning forward from the hip. I'm not going like this, like this is cheating. This is my back, okay? Yeah, nice. Yes, sir. Uh, toward this way. Yep, toward the lead knee. Yep. Okay, so we put both our hands on the ground, sit up really tall. We're going to lean forward, and we're gonna, I want you to scan a little bit and try to find the deepest line of tension in that left hip, the outside of the left hip. Okay, wherever you find the deepest amount of tension, you're going to hang there. Okay? I want you to keep leaning into that stretch. Breathing, let yourself, let your body know that this is okay. Keep chest tall. It's as if you're trying to dump your pelvis forward, right? Like you're trying to pour water out of a bowl, okay? Keep holding that stretch. Everybody feel stretch on the outside of the left hip? Good. Good, keep breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. I want you to keep breathing deep just like that. As we do this, as, as you breathe and sit into the stretch, I'm gonna explain to you one more time what we're gonna do, okay? Pails is the, press it, keep the stretch. Don't come off the stretch, okay? Pails is pressing down into the physical block. The physical block in this case is the ground. Okay, you're not gonna be able to move, that's okay. And I'm gonna tell you, 20%, 40%, 60, 80, safest, greatest effort. Like I said, if you don't like it, if it doesn't feel good, back off, okay? And when I say rails, you're gonna try without moving any other part of your body, right? That's the key, is you can't move anything. You're gonna to try to pick your whole foot up off the ground, but you won't be able to, okay? Because you're at end range. So, everybody take a deep breath. Exhale. 
we're gonna start to root our hands into the ground, start to squeeze your whole body as if somebody were gonna punch you. Okay, we're trying to brace ourselves. And with that lead leg, we're gonna press down into the ground through the ankle, okay? As if you were trying to open it up, okay? Through the ankle at 20%. Imagine you've got a rod going through your knee that goes through your knee and out the back of your hip. You can only rotate on that axis, okay? So we're pressing down at 20%. Now 40%, let's ramp it up. Press down at 60%, like you're trying to dig a hole in the ground with your ankle. Press down at 80%. This should be tough. Okay, from here, press down safest, greatest effort, everything you have into the ground. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Five, four, three, two, do not move anything. Rails, try to pull the ankle up off the ground. Pull, 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 pull. As hard as you can, everything you got. Pull, 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 pull. Five, four, keep pulling. Three, two, and relax. Good job. Anybody feel anything funny? Feel pretty good? It sucks while you're doing it, but it feels better when you're done. Okay? We're gonna stay in this position and we're gonna move to the backside leg. Okay? So we're gonna keep the left leg here. We're gonna sit up really tall and we're gonna rotate toward the backside leg. In this case, the right leg. Okay? I want you to imagine, or you're trying to take your right butt cheek and put it on the ground if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Okay, we're just trying to get as far as we can. Okay. Lean back a little bit if you have to. You want to find the tension in that right hip. Okay. Hold that stretch. Everybody have the stretch? Everybody good? Okay. Nobody's waving around, so it should be okay. Um, you can put your hands on the mat too to stabilize yourself. That's fine. Okay. We're going to hold this for two minutes, and then the protocol is the same. Okay. This one can aggravate knees, so if you've got any knee things, just be careful here. Okay, because the knee is in a, not a compromised position, but it's in a, a tough position for knees sometimes. Okay, so we're gonna hold for two minutes, and then the physical block again is the ground. So it's gonna be as if you were trying to push this way, right? We're trying to rotate back to where your leg normally goes. Okay, once we get to safest, greatest effort, when I say rails, this is where everybody, the, 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 uh, the most common error here is People go rails and they go like this. And they try to they move so that they can lift this up. I'm not worried about you getting it up off the ground. I'm worried about the intent. Okay? I want you trying to pull it off the ground, but staying stiff through the rest of your body. Okay? So nice deep breaths in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Let your body know that this is okay. In through the nose out through the mouth. Good, we're gonna take one more deep breath in. Exhale. Let's root our hands into the ground. Brace yourself as if somebody were gonna punch you. With your right ankle now, press down into the ground at 20%. Okay, again, imagine you've got that rod through your knee, goes through your knee and out your right hip. You can only rotate on this axis. Ramp it up to 40%. Ramp it up to 60%. Kevin's your knee okay? Okay, if you back off if it gets too much, okay? Ramp up to 80%. Safest, greatest effort, everything you're available to give down into the ground, as hard as you can without getting hurt. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. As hard as you can. Three, two, one. Do not move anything. Rails, try to pull your ankle up off the ground. Pull, 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 pull. Imagine there's a scale underneath your ankle. You want to make it read zero. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling as hard as you can. Pull. Three, two, one, and relax. Good job. 
How's that one feel? That one's a little more intense, huh? Yeah. Okay. From here, switch sides. Okay. Okay, we've got to do the other side. Um, and then turn to face me just so I can see where your legs are configured here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now on the right leg, sit up nice and tall, hands on the mat, lean forward from the hip, scan that hip, find the deepest line of tension in the right hip. Okay. For those of you who just showed up, I would skip this one and then jump in on the next one because this is like really intense and if you haven't done the, the other stuff, then it's not going to be fun. Okay, everybody find that stretch in the right hip. Good. And if you feel over the course of the next two minutes, if you feel the stretch go away, just lean a little deeper. Okay, and keep fighting for that stretch. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to access deeper le levels of tissue. All right, whenever we stretch like this, that initial feeling of tension is your body trying to protect yourself from going too far. Okay, but after about two minutes, that starts to dissipate, it starts to go away. Okay, so we want to get to the, the, the deepest level that we can get here. Okay, big deep breaths. Exhale. In through the nose. Exhale. In through the nose. Exhale. We do one more deep breath. In through the nose. Exhale. Start to root your hands into the ground. Brace yourself as if somebody were going to punch you. With the right ankle, press down into the ground at 20%. The ankle, not the knee, but the ankle. Let's ramp it up to 40%. Ramp it up to 60%. Ramp it up to 80%. Safest, greatest effort, everything you are available to give, press down into the ground. As hard as you can without getting hurt. Press, press, press. Everything you got. Five, four, three, two, one. Don't move anything. Try to pull your ankle up off the ground at 100%. Pull, 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 pull. Imagine that scale underneath your ankle. Try to make it read zero. Pull as hard as you can. Everything you got. Rotate all of that tissue. Keep pulling, keep pulling. Five, four, three, two, and slowly relax. Good job. I'm gonna go to the backside hip now, and then we'll move on, okay? So, staying in that position, you put a hand on your hip, you rotate toward the backside leg, in this case, your left leg, okay? Scan, find the deepest line of tension in that hip, and let it hang there for two minutes. You got really mobile hips. I've never seen anybody get quite that low that easily. <laughs> have, you, have you done stuff like this before? I, you were at the last seminar, so you did the shoulders, right? Yeah, I was at the shoulders. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Had you done any like hip stuff like this before? I, I tried. You tried to? Okay. Okay. This is, then this is really important. This is really important for you then, right? Yeah. Cool. Keep taking deep breaths in. Inhale. Exhale. There are two more deep breaths in through the nose. Exhale. Last rep. Exhale. Let's root our hands into, our ground, into the ground. Kevin, you rotate that way. Yeah, there you go. You should feel more in that. Is that not like it? No, it should be in that hip, your left hip. Yep. Okay, root our hands into the ground. Brace yourself as if somebody were going to punch you. 
I'm gonna press down into the ground at 20% with the left ankle. Okay, imagine, imagine. <laughs> around that. Let's ramp it up to 40%. Ramp it up to 60%. Ramp it up to 80%. Safest, greatest effort, everything you're available to give. Press down into the ground. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. Everything you got without getting hurt. Press, press, five, four, three, two, one. Safest, greatest effort, back the other way. Try to lift the ankle off the ground. Do not move anything else. Keep lifting, keep lifting, keep lifting. Everything you got, try to make that scale read zero. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Slowly relax. Good job. Good. You guys can come out of that position. You can sit however is comfortable. Does feel okay? That's intense, right? Very good. Okay, so here's kind of a brief visualization of what it is we're trying to do here. Okay, if you think about joint angle and the amount of force you're able to create, We'll, we'll talk about the elbow because this is the easiest one to, to talk through, okay? When my elbow is at zero degrees, I can't create very much force here. I'm, I'm, I'm not in a good position to create a lot of force. I'm, I'm closer to zero. If I'm all the way at 180 degrees, also probably where I'm weakest, okay? Like if you think about like a, just a dumbbell curl, simple, okay? But when my joint angle is at about 90 degrees, that's where I'm strongest, all right? I think we can all relate to that, okay? So that's this part of the graph right here. We're weak at 180 and we're weak at zero, but at 90 we're really strong. And so pales and rails aims to bring these edges up. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, that's what we're trying to do. We're working at end range and we're trying to build strength here. Okay? Okay. We'll move on to another strategy that we can use. We use what are called passive range holds. Okay? The steps are when I bring the joint to the end passive range of motion, which means assisted. So does anybody here, or does everybody here know the difference between passive and active range of motion? Okay. So, active range of motion, we'll talk hip flexion now. I'm bringing my knee toward my chest. Okay. This is as high as I can go unassisted. This is solely the tissue that's doing the work, right? But passively, I can make it all the way here, okay? Right, this, is, this would be assisted, right? This is my passive range of motion versus my active range of motion, okay? So the first step is to bring, first bring the joint to its end passive range of motion, okay? Then we want to create what's called internal tension, okay? Back to the hip because this is the one that we're gonna do. Okay, I first pull it all the way up into passive range. And now from here, even though I'm assisting with my hand, I'm gonna try to pull my knee to my chest, right? So I'm gonna contract everything in here, trying to bring it even closer if I can, okay? I won't be able to, because I'm at the end range, okay? But we wanna create tension in that tissue, okay? And then while the tension is on, we're gonna release the assistance, hold it there in that position, and then apply the assistance again and relax, okay? So it looks like this. Passive range, I create tension, so I'm creating stiffness in my hip, I let go, hold, two, three, apply assistance again, and I relax, okay? So you hear me say tension, create the tension, okay? So that's what it's gonna look like. Everybody go ahead, stand up, and find a place on the wall. I don't want you having a balance. You can find a place on the wall here or the pillar there. Wall here is fine. You don't need a lot of space for this. We're gonna put one hand on the wall. Doesn't matter which one, just maybe be where you can see me if you can. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, with our outside hip, okay, we're gonna bring our knee toward our chest. Yep, and then use your hand to pull yourself up into that passive end range, okay? As far up as you can, 
Okay. From here, we're going to create tension. So you're going to try to pull your knee even closer to your chest, but only using the hip. Okay. Create tension. Now let's release the arm, hold it up, two, three, and bring your hand back to the shin. Yep, there you go. Pull the knee up, create internal tension, squeeze everything in here, try to pull your knee closer to your chest, relax, or not relax, release the hand, hold, two, three, and reapply. Good. Pull the knee up toward the chest. Internal tension, release the hand, one, two, three, and reapply. Good, we're gonna do two more. Internal tension, release, one, two, three, and reapply. Just make sure in that the down leg, you're standing really, really tall. You don't wanna be bent here, okay? Last one, bring the knee up, internal tension, release the hand, one, two, three, and reapply. Very good job. You can rest, relax, flip sides. Good, go ahead, bring your knee all the way to your chest with your hand. Ready, internal tension. Let go of the hand, or the shin rather. Good, one, two, three, and reapply. Good. Bring the knee toward the chest, internal tension, and let go. One, two, three, and hold it. Good. Internal tension, let go. One, two, three, and hold it. Good, two more. Ready, internal tension, big squeeze, and let go. One, two, Three, and hold the shin. Good, last rep, best rep. Tension, and let go. One, two, three, and hold it. Good job, all right, you can come, come on down from here. That's pretty spicy, huh? Those are tough. Okay, good job, very good job. So, why do we do passive range holds? Passive range holds help us build strength and control at the end range, okay? Control being the biggest one here. Okay, and that's gonna parlay us into the next thing. Okay, and then we just did our standing hip flexion passive range holds. Okay. Which is to our last bit, which is passive range liftoffs. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the end range, the end passive range. Okay. And then we're gonna back off just a little bit. Okay, we're gonna back off just enough that we can move the limb without assistance. Okay, and we're gonna lift, hold, and relax. So what that's gonna look like is we're gonna go back into that 90-90 position. Okay, and we're gonna focus on the trail leg here. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna position myself, my torso, such that when I lift my whole leg, I wanna lift this so that my shin stays parallel to the ground. I wanna lift it so that I could fit maybe one hand underneath. Okay, so if I'm all the way out here and I can do this, this does me nothing. Right, because I'm not close enough to the end range. Okay, I have to position myself so that this is all I get. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go on the right leg for now. So let's go left leg forward, right leg back. Okay, we're gonna face the left leg. And then I want everybody to kind of find your own spot, right? You may have to lean pretty far, you may have to sit straight up. Okay, find whatever spot you can do whatever spot you need to be in to lift the whole right shin parallel to the ground, okay? Just enough to fit one hand underneath, okay? Once you've found that spot, hold that spot, okay? You can let your leg relax, it's fine. Leg relax, okay. All right, so we're gonna lift, hold, and then relax. So it goes, root your hands into the ground, brace as if somebody were gonna punch you, lift, Hold, two, three, and relax. Good job. When we relax, try to relax, try to place the knee and the ankle down at the same time, okay? So it all lifts as one and, and we relax as one, okay? Let's go brace and lift. Hold one, two, 
three, and relax. Good. Brace, lift, one, two, three, and relax. Good, two more. Let's go, brace, lift, one, two, three, and relax. Last rep, best rep. Brace, lift, hold, two, three, and down. Very good job. All right, let's switch to the other side. Okay, same thing, nice and tall. Let's go ahead, find wherever you need to be to lift that, that leg up parallel to the ground. It may be a little bit different than the other side, and that's okay. Everybody find that spot. Craig, this side, this side is different for you, huh? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, everybody find the spot. Let's brace hands into the ground. Brace as if somebody were gonna punch you. Let's lift. One, two, three, and down. Good. Lift. One, two, three, and down. Very good. Brace and lift. One, two, three, and down. Two reps left. Brace, lift, two, three, and down. Last rep, best rep. Brace, lift, one, two, three, and down. Very good job. Awesome, guys, good job. Okay, so passive range liftoffs. What are we looking to do? Similar to passive range holds, build strength at end range. Okay, but we're trying, more importantly, to bridge the gap between active and passive ranges of motion, right? Think back to my, my first example, right? This is my active range. This is my passive range. The passive range liftoffs help us bridge that gap, create a smaller gap between passive and active range, okay? So there's our 90-90 hip passive range liftoffs that we just did. Okay, which leads us back to where we started, which is cars. And so we use cars both at the beginning and the end of all our mobility stuff, okay? The beginning to, like I said earlier, maintain joint function, expand range of motion, lubricate the joints, prepare for higher intensity work, which we just did, right? Pales rails, passive range holds, passive range liftoffs. Mm -hmm. One last thing that we wanna do, and that is to download the new space that you just earned, okay? Because you might not be able to feel it right now, but all that work that you just did may have gained you just a little bit more in your hip, okay? And so when we go back to cars, what we're trying to do is move through the end range so that our body knows this is the space I need now, right? And you do this enough, over enough time, you'll start to notice big changes in the way your joints move, okay? So we're gonna go back to that side-lying position, same thing that we started with. Let's everybody lie on your right side Okay, remember we wanna create tension. Let's bring our knees up kind of toward our chest so our hips are about 90 degrees. Good. Okay, we're creating tension with the, the bottom arm, in this case the right arm and right leg. Okay, we're gonna bring the knee up into the armpit. Open, knee down, ankle up. Should feel cramp. Go the other way. Yep. Yeah, there you go, yep. Go toward the cramp, good job, keep coming around. And you'll go knee to knee. Good, let's kick back. Unwind, let's open the knee toward the ceiling. Drive that knee as high as you can up into the armpit. Very good, bend back down and knee to knee. Very good. Knee up into armpit. Open toward the ceiling. Knee down, ankle up. Good, fight that cramp, go toward the cramp. Keep coming around until the knees are together. Good, kick back, open toward the ceiling, drive that knee up, up into the armpit, and back down and around. Good, one more time on this side, knee into armpit, up toward the ceiling, knee down, ankle up, point the sole up toward the ceiling, should feel cramp on the outside here, keep coming around until knees are together. Kick back, open toward the ceiling, Drive that knee up into the armpit, 
Back down and around, knees together, very good job. Let's flip sides. Good, let's go tension on the bottom side here. So pressing the left arm and left knee down into the ground, stay really, really stiff. Let's bring the right knee up into the armpit, open toward the ceiling, knee down, ankle up. Fight the cramp, go toward the cramp. Good, keep coming around until your knees are together. Good, kick straight back. Open, whoops, not that far. Keep your knee bent. There you go, open toward the ceiling, knee up toward the armpit, and back around. Good, we got two more. Knee up into the armpit, open toward the ceiling, knee down, ankle up. Go toward that cramp, keep fighting the cramp. Good job, keep coming around, knees together. Kick back, open the knee, drive up into the armpit, Good, and then back together. Last rep, best rep. Try to make sure everything stays perfectly still except the right hip. Let's go knee up into armpit. Open toward the ceiling. Knee down, ankle up. Go toward the cramp. Fight the cramp, keep coming around, knee to knee. Kick back. Open the knee toward the ceiling. Drive that knee up into the armpit and knee to knee. Very good job, everybody. That was awesome. Okay, so with regards to cars, something that I failed to mention earlier. I want you to think about cars. If you do nothing that I said today except cars, you'll write me a thank you note in five years, promise. Okay, cars like brushing your teeth for your joints. Okay, you don't brush your teeth because it's fun and sexy. You brush your teeth because if you don't, your teeth fall out of your head. Okay, likewise, if you don't move your joints the way they were meant to move, they will stop moving, okay? You cannot overdose on them. You can do them as often as you want. I like to start my morning with this. I train typically in the mornings. So I think it's really, really important for me to get even more of a warm up in than, than you know, people who train at night because um, I haven't had time to wake up and move around a lot, okay? So going through my cars helps me um, you know, do all of these things, but also is a good check-in. How do I feel today? Do I have any nicks, bumps, bruises, things I need to watch out for? Um, because typically those things occur at end ranges. And if I put myself through a very quick scan every morning, I'd be like, ah, okay, shoulder, not feeling great today. Probably should stay away from X, Y, Z. Okay, versus going into it blind and then somebody putting me somewhere against my will and it becoming a, uh, you know, a more problematic situation, okay? So, thank you guys for coming. This is my contact information. The seminar is free, it is donation based. If you do think that that was worthwhile, you can scan that Venmo code, um, but you're not required to. I'm just out here, I wanna help as many grapplers as I can build better bodies so that they can do more of what they love, okay? If you ever have any questions, you can email or text me. You can follow me on Instagram at matt.jits.hue, and then our gym is at Victory High Performance. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. as, as our gauge? Yeah. yeah, so as far as closing angle pain goes, so when we put people through, we do a CARS assessment. For everybody who comes through our gym, the very first thing they do is the CARS assessment uh, because we want to get a look at do the joints move by themselves well. And if we do note closing angle pain, then that tells us we need to work on something. We need to, that, that's our cue to change our approach. But if we, if we find closing angle pain, like what we do in the moment is uh, talk about either pac manning or pizzaing around the closing angle pain. So if I use my shoulder as an example, if I start to feel pain here, this is the closing angle, this is the opening angle, then I either wanna just pizza around it and continue, okay, or if I start to feel pain here, I can just go back the other direction, right? And I only wanna move through the pain-free ranges. So I say I start to feel it again. Okay, back the other way. And I wanna move through the pain-free ranges. You'll find that if you do have closing angle pain in any of these places, and you do move through pain-free ranges, eventually that space gets a little smaller, oftentimes goes away. Because in order to get nutrients to the joint capsule, you have to move it through the end range, right? It just won't work otherwise. 
So um, that's something that we found a lot, actually, is people come in and they'll be like, you know, I feel pain in my shoulder. And I'm like, okay, let's just go the other way. We go the other way, and sometimes as soon as that session, the pain's gone, right? Which is really amazing. Sometimes it takes longer, and you know, without knowing full history, it'd be impossible to tell. Uh, or with imaging, you know, that, that, that could um, affect a lot of things, but that's how you deal with closing angle pain when you're doing cars. It's just move around or back the other direction until you feel it again, okay? Anybody else have any questions? Nobody has questions. That means I did a really good job. All right, cool. What's that? Yeah. Uh huh. I I do them right before I train. Um, you can do them at home. Like I might like wake up. I make my breakfast. I just kind of like go through a quick hip thing. Be like, how are my hips feeling today? Um, you know, I might go through my shoulders or whatever. But like. I'll show up to the gym, and then I hop on the mats maybe five minutes before, 10 minutes before, and I go through the whole thing. I go neck, spine, shoulder blades, shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, ankles, toes, the whole thing. Um, and I can send that to you guys. I, we've got the whole, you know, it's free. We want to get as many people doing this as we can because I know it works. Um, so if you have questions about that, just let me know. I'd be happy to send it to Ori. Just follow us and shoot me a DM and I'll, I'll send you the YouTube video, okay? Anybody else? How many things total does it end up being that you're moving through time? Uh, let's see, neck, spine. I do cars on everything. I do cars on everything. Because the even if you don't need it in the moment, it's a long-term strategy, right? It's that brushing your teeth thing. So how long does it end up taking you Five, 10 minutes. 15 tops if you like really wanted to push it. Um, but like for my morning routine, five, 10 minutes. It's not long. It's really, really easy. Um, like I said, you can't overdose on it. So if you find you're pressed for time or whatever, you're standing in line somewhere, ankles, right? Like you can do stuff here, there, wherever. Um, you might avoid, you know, full spine cars while you're at line and Safeway, but uh, that might look a little funny, but you know, anywhere is fine and as often as you want, right? But all of them, for sure. Anybody have any questions? No? Going once, going twice. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, I will leave this up here for a little while. Can we take a picture real quick? And then um, if people want to roll, we can roll. Thank you. Thanks, guys.